start the recording right now. So this will be available to everybody after the presentation. I'll probably send that out today at the latest tomorrow. The recording of the presentation will also send out a PDF of the slideshow as well. If possible, I know that our presenters often um, like people to have their cameras on, if possible. It's not always possible for everybody, but it is very helpful for, I know personally, as a presenter to have some feedback, who's falling asleep, who's interested, whose dogs are cute, whatever that might be. You know, we all, we, I, we, but we all understand that people are trying to multitask, so that, that no, no judgment there, but it is helpful to have those cameras on. And I guess the last housekeeping item is questions. Um, that's up to Christina. I will be monitoring the chat box so if people are bashful or microphones don't work or those kinds of things, I will gladly interrupt on your behalf via the chat. Uh, the other alternative might be, if Christina's okay with it, to unmute your microphone and go <clears throat> and, or, or something uh, like that and interrupt. Third option is, of course, to ask your questions at the end of the presentation, which is a good one as well. I usually stop the recording at those questions in case the questions are personal or whatever, so that um, doesn't, doesn't wind up for mass consumption. All right, so without further ado, I present to you Christina Rothstein, and I present to you also her presentation on aromatherapy. Thanks so much, Mark. Good morning, wow. everybody. Thank you for taking the time to be here. I know time is a very precious resource. <laughs> I appreciate you hopefully cozied up at home or at your office somewhere. My daughter said to me this morning, mom, when I feel all warm and cozy, I feel safe. And I, I love that sentiment. And that's sort of what aromas can bring into our lives. Another layer of sensory information and perhaps modulation through different experiences, different times of day. So I would like to address what I find are some commonly held beliefs about essential oils and aromatherapy. And I wanna to talk to you mostly about practical application for perhaps you personally, maybe in your family, in your household. So I'm gonna share my screen and have a little presentation here to share. I'm going to full screen mode once I get it up. All right. Can everybody see that? Okay. Thank you for the thumbs up, Sally. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. All right, so on our agenda for our little chat today, and I will try to leave time at the end for questions for sure, but I definitely wanna go over what is aromatherapy? What is the science of olfaction? What are the science of smells? And why is our sense of smell a potential way to help us de-stress or to enhance our emotional well-being? We're gonna talk about essential oils and, and stress in particular, and I'm gonna go through some specific oils because there are almost as many essential oils as there are plants out there. So we're going to start with some basic information about oils and plants that are well-known we're going to talk about what it looks like to use essential oils in your everyday life. And we're going to talk about building an aromatherapy toolkit for whatever your needs may be. So once again, my name is Christina. I have been using essential oils in my own home for more than eight years. My daughter was six months old. You see her here. She's almost nine. And when she was six months old, I started staying home with her for this one year blip. Now, my husband is actually a psychologist at Sasco River and his clinical program brought us to Pennsylvania where I was a new mom with a new baby and no friends and no family nearby. And I had also been a special education teacher and have done all kinds of work in literacy and executive functions. I've worked with high schoolers, middle schoolers and their families. Um, for many years. And when I was home all of a sudden with my baby, I began to realize that I never really knew how to turn my brain off at the end of the day. And I used to have a very heavy workload, fulfilling caseload and job in special education where I would think about my students and emails and 
well into the evening, even well into when I got, you know, when I got home. And this is before I was a parent. Um, but when I was home, all of a sudden being home with my daughter, I realized my brain is still going. <laughs> but I don't have the same things to worry about. So my brain found new things to worry about. <laughs> have you ever had that feeling where I just started to get into some negative patterns, especially with my sleep? Sleep was the reason that I became interested in essential oils. I found that I was home with my daughter all day and then I could not shut off my brain at night. So perhaps, you know, being in this new community, whatever it was, I, I was looking for a way to also just help home feel a little homier. We were in this rental house. And again, I had no friends or family nearby and I had started to learn about essential oils. And I started to use them at night to help me quiet my mind. I found that doing some deep breathing exercises before bed, running a diffuser, sometimes rubbing oils on my feet, all of these things were helping me. They were really, really helping me. I had this realization that all of a sudden bedtime felt like the curtain was going down. I was a theater kid. So it's like <laughs> the, cur the curtain's down and my brain is clean and quiet and I could just go to bed. Um, but of course, I live with a psychologist. So I'm experiencing my own personal success with the oils, but I also have this curiosity about how they're actually working. Are they actually working? Is this just a placebo effect? So today I want to talk to you about some of what I have found in the research over the years and a lot of what I have found through my own personal experience and through the lived experience of thousands of different people that I've helped integrate aromatherapy into their home environment, into their car, into their bedroom, bedtime routine. Um, so there's so many different ways to integrate it. And I want to give you a glimpse of what that looks like today. So I love that Sasko River is addressing stress. I think that this is such a worthwhile topic and to give parents tools, discussion, space for discussion, space for solutions is so incredibly important. And I see this in my own personal life. I see this now that I have school age children, I have two children. And of course, as my work as a special education teacher, and I've also worked at Sasco as an executive functions coach, a literacy coach, I see how chronic stress impacts so many different aspects of our health and our communities. And aromatherapy is this quick intervention that can be used for so many different things. It can be used for stress relief. It really can help calm your, all, all of the things that are getting activated when we're stressed. I see there's a talk coming up about the biological effects of stress. Like that is it's, it's, it's incredible, but we know what they are. Your heart starts beating faster, shallower breathing. You might feel nauseous in your stomach. Your palms start getting sweaty. We, we know a lot of this. We know what it feels like to be stressed. And aromatherapy provides this for me. It has been an external reminder. So I look at my bottles. I have some right here. I look at my oil bottles and they remind me to take a breath. Sometimes before I can even remind myself <laughs> there that I, I see them and I'm like, wait, or the routine of setting up my diffuser every morning allows me a moment to say, what do we need right now? What does the family need right now? Let me go take a minute for me and for them and, and take this small step and talk about what that is. Aromatherapy can also be used as a distraction. I have a four-year-old <laughs> and we can use essential oils to distract, you know, kids can perseverate for many different reasons. Kids can also have a hard time activating, so can grownups, right? And we can use aromatherapy in so many different ways. But why is this? Why is aromatherapy actually useful for stress relief? It has to do with the interaction of olfaction with the limbic system of the brain. The limbic system of the brain is related to our emotions and our memories. So I'm gonna get a little bit sciencey here and we're gonna get a little more sciencey with some research about smells and aromatherapy and what they do. But I just wanted to show you these graphics of 
the intricate nature of our olfactory system. There are 50 million olfactory sensors um, in the nasal olfactory epithelium. That's incredible. And what's interesting is that about two and a half years ago, when a lot of people started losing their sense of smell, there was renewed interest in how this actually impacts someone's emotional well being. There were journals, there were discussion groups that were opened up around people who lost their sense of smell, anosmia, it's called, from COVID, and how they felt disoriented, they felt depressed, they felt unable to connect to their environment. And it's very interesting because previously the sense of smell was kind of thought of as like this extra, you know, obviously we have it, but is it the most crucial for our survival when you think about some of the other things that we have, right? But um, so I, I presented to the Sasco staff of, around the sense of smell and talked about this awesome um, podcast from the New York Times that has to do with this topic and how the sense of smell actually is w- way more important than we ever realized. And um, so why is that? Because the olfactory pathway leads right to the amygdala and the hypothalamus. So those are parts of the brain where memory and emotion happen and which affects stress response. So when you smell anything, it has an impact on you. We can smell lots of things. It's actually said that humans, if we, if we work at it, we can follow a scent trail like a dog. <laughs> we just don't use, we don't have it honed that sense, of, or that sense as much. Um, so we smell all kinds of different things. I bet that you can conjure a smell that's associated with the memory, like um, maybe a grandparent's home when you were growing up. My grandparents had an indoor pool So their house always smelled like chlorine. I smell chlorine. I think of my grandparents. It's weird. (laughs) It's weird. (laughs) Floral oils. I noticed that people have strong reactions to oils like rose or geranium or your lang lang. And they often say that smells like a nursing home. Isn't that interesting? Right? Now we all have different preferences, just like we have different tastes for food, just like we have different things that make us feel comfortable and safe, just like we gravitate toward different activities, we have an individualized sense of smell. And it is interesting to think about using commonly known plants and essential oils that are derived from those plants for specific purposes in our olfaction. So In other words, if there are things that you like to smell that have a certain effect on you, great, go for it, right? We can, we can, we can use that, but if we're not sure where to start and we know we actually want to have some benefit versus some associate association, the brain is making to a memory, we can use essential oils. So essential oils are highly concentrated plant liquids. They're not essential because it's like a fad (laughs) or because it's like a a fun name, like they're essential oil. They're essential to the plant. (laughs) They're essential to the plant. They help the plant recover from different forms of trauma or changes in weather, fungus or insects. We think about certain plants that have the ability to deter pests. Yeah, that's for their own survival. So they can be taken out in several different ways from the roots, the leaves, the stems, the flowers, the bark of many different plants. Citrus oils are actually pressed from the rinds of the citrus fruit. And for many plants, the benefits that they have for the plant carry over to humans. Essential oils have been modernized recently. I see them lots of different places now. But what I want you to know is that they've been used for thousands and thousands of years by different cultures, 
all over the world. And sometimes before something is proven, it is known. Does that make sense? It is traditionally, culturally known that a plant can help with a certain thing. That being said, there is a lot of research that actually proves it and is starting to show the mechanics of how the smell interacts with this and the brain. And that's really cool. But I also just appreciate the opportunity that aromatherapy gives me to get back to a more traditional way of doing things and to tap into cultural knowledge all around the world. Tea tree, copaiba, cinnamon bark. These are renowned, these are spices. You know, you think about the spice trade. This is another form of the spice trade. So, you know, the oil that I use for sleep is actually referenced in the Bible hundreds of times. Cedarwood. You know, um, many people have heard of frankincense and myrrh, just as much as they've heard of lavender oil. Frankincense and myrrh are essential oils. And we hear about them. The three kings brought the, what did they bring to Jesus in the manger? Essential oils <laughs> and gold. It's so, it's so interesting to learn about, to think back to how these were used. Ancient Egyptians had distillation equipment in their tombs. They had vats of essential oil buried with pharaohs and things. Pretty cool. But I know that people have a sense of maybe confusion or at best curiosity about like, but what about the essential oils I see at the store? You know, what about the essential oils I see here or there? I, again, I see them everywhere. And I, I've thought about a lot of different analogies. And um, the truth is, is that a lot of essential oils are out there to be used as fragrance, as some sort of new version of a candle, you know? And I think that's great. I think that's fine. But there are different qualities and different levels of essential oil that you would use for stress relief. So the best analogy I thought of, I talked with Ethan about this before. I said, what do you think about this? <laughs> there's, you know, real French brie. Yeah, there's like really good cheese in France. Like it is, it's on the barrel, it's oozing and gooing and it's delicious. And it's, there's a, there's an art and a science behind how that cheese is made. And it's a beautiful thing. It's like an art form. And then you have your pasteurized cheese product in a plastic sleeve. Yeah. That's how I see essential oils in it, that are out there. There are some that are like this, some like the French brie and some like the pasteurized cheese product. They're sort of like cheese. They were sort of put together to look like cheese <laughs> and smell like cheese and melt like cheese, but they may come with some additional things that you don't actually want in there. And they wouldn't actually have a lot of nutritional value or, you know, oomph behind them. But we, we also have this other option. So long story short, we have essential oils that are botanicals, that are botanical extracts, that are not perfume or fragrance quality or a, the, the Americanized version of the pasteurized cheese product. And botanical essential oils contain these chemical compounds that work with the body and the mind. And we know, you know, if I say lavender, you probably immediately think of certain things. If I said peppermint, you probably already think of certain things. These things are known deeply to us. And because of the individualized nature of aroma, because of the lack of standardization in essential oils, it's interesting, it's hard to imagine that we could prove it through research and yet there's tons. So as much as we know, as much as you can feel essentials, essential oils working and aromatherapy as you incorporate it into your life, also know that there is a whole bunch of science that backs up their properties as well as the physiological and psychological impacts so one of the first things 
that I did after I was experiencing success with essential oils was I didn't believe it. I had to go have it proven in black and white. <laughs> it wasn't enough for me that I was sleeping so well and I felt so much less stressed. And I found so much interesting research out there. For example, um, there's a great study about peppermint oil and how um, inhaling some peppermint oil, I forget if they drink it or they pep, I think they drink it in water. And the, they did a workout and the, they performed more work and had a longer time until exhaustion with the peppermint oil. There's another study about diffusing orange oil in a dentist's office waiting room and measuring salivary cortisol. And the stress levels were less when the orange oil was diffused. There are so many different examples of research like that. I love to include that for you or anyone in your life who may be like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I include lots of that as a part of our consultation. I can show you the research and show you more about how this works. Um, but I want to focus for the presentation, for the rest of our presentation, really on the practical application. Okay. Before I move on, this might be a good pause. Does anyone have any questions or comments on anything I've shared so far? We doing on time. All right, awesome. Okay, you good? So simply by inhaling an essential oil, when we're talking about aroma therapy, I don't really like the term aroma therapy. Therapy is what our amazing OTs and therapists do <laughs> and clinicians do at Sasco. I think of aromatherapy as a self exploration, a self-discovery process where you learn the basics. I teach you the basics and then you explore what works best for you. You learn to listen more to your body and to yourself. And there are oils that can be used in ways that aren't traditional, but you may like them used that way. In other words, an oil that makes me fall asleep might make you focus on work. And that is totally cool. That's all right. If we think about some general categories of reasons that we might use aromatherapy, especially in when we're thinking about stress, we can think about feeling calm in the moment, helping to activate and focus, helping with sleep, and helping us handle new experiences and daily stress. And I'm here to share this because I think. Most people need help in one of these areas. And whether it's your child or your family member using the oils or using aromatherapy, or if it's you, there are great benefits. Great benefits. If we're working on parenting strategies and thinking about trying to feel calm in the mo moment, choosing our words carefully, <laughs> right? We can use these things as much as our kids can school drop off at the beginning of the year, right? We get that separation anxiety. That's a really great time that we use aromatherapy. When my kids, when my daughter wants to come home and veg out and then it's time for homework time, she doesn't want to do the homework, we can use aromatherapy. So as I mentioned, there are so many different plants. There are also blends of single oils that blend together into something beautiful and synergistic and wonderful. But where to start, right? Where do you start? We start with a couple basic plants that are well-known, well-researched, and that are very versatile for all of these different areas. So I'm gonna talk about them and share um, some more about practical application. So the first, one of the first essential oils that we cover in the aromatherapy consultation that is most widely used is lavender. Now lavender, you got a little purple bottle right here. It's a purple flowering plant. It smells very herbal. And I know that 
some people I've had many experiences. I'll say where people smell lavender oil and it smells different than what they thought lavender scent smelled like because lavender plant is harder to grow than its cousin lavendine, which is actually mo what most of us think of as lavender smell. This is true lavender, lavandula angustifolia, which was also studied in several really cool ways for both sleep and anxiety. And it was actually compared to lorazepam um, for an internal use lavender called Selexin. And those are double blind placebo controlled studies that I was like, what? I can't believe it. They're done in Germany and it's incredible. Um, lavender also has adaptogenic properties. So it helps the body adapt in many different ways to its surroundings and, and internally in, in our physiology. And lavender is great for soothing the skin. <laughs> so um, it's funny. It's like you burn, you, you burn your hand on the stove at my house. It's just happened the other day with my daughter's friend. And we were like, okay, we're going to drop a little lavender on it. And she was a little worked up too, of course. So not only did the lavender soothe the burn, I was like, take some deep breaths, honey, take some deep breaths. And she's smelling it and it's calming her down at the same time. Wonderful, wonderful oil. Then we have an oil like peppermint. Peppermint is used in so many different conventional products for the taste and the smell. Um, I think of it in all of the digestive aids out there, right? If you think about why do, why are there the after dinner mints when you leave the restaurant? Why are those mint? Because mint actually helps stimulate digestion and mint can help if you're feeling nauseous as well. Mint also has a lot of menthol. So it really helps deepen breathing, helps have this zingy, fresh cooling sensation. And this is a perfect oil to help you energize or help your kids energize before sports practice or before homework time. And again, we know from research that peppermint beneficially modulates performance on demanding cognitive tasks and it attenuated the increase in mental fatigue. So as the, the mental fatigue is getting bigger, peppermint is slowing down the increase. I know that's a lot of words. <laughs> it's slowing down the increase in mental fatigue. I love peppermint. Then we have citrus oils. There's a whole variety of different citrus oils, orange, lemon, grapefruit, tangerine, lime. I remember doing a creative writing experiment in high school where my teacher gave us an orange and had us peel the orange and write a poem about that experience. And you know, you know how wonderful that smells when you're right, when you're opening up a citrus fruit. And what you're doing is releasing the essential oil from the peel when you're doing that. And that's where the essential oil comes from. Research shows that citrus oils are great for anxiety. They pair really well with lavender. They pair really well with really anything, any oil that you might find too strong or you're not sure why you like it. It's working on some memories for you. It's, it, 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 it's good, but maybe you want to pair it with some citrus to balance it out and make it bright and happy and familiar. Um, citrus oils were found to increase a buyer's perception of how much a house was worth when shown, when it was diffused in the home. And I think that's really interesting. So they tried it compared to, you know, what do they do? They cook, they bake the cookies. They had some other smells going. Citrus was the winner. And the reason that they, that they believe that is the case is because people know what it is and then they're not preoccupied wondering what it is. <laughs> so citrus oils are very familiar for us and for that they can be calming. They can be used really any time of day. And it can, can be, as I said, they can be paired with lots of different oils. All right, so when I say we're using oils, what does that actually mean? Aromatherapy. The biggest idea is that we're breathing in the aroma. That can look like a lot of different things, but however that needs to happen, we're just breathing in the aroma. So that might look like smelling it from the bottle. And if you're very sensitive to smells, you can start all the way down here at your belly button and slowly bring the oil up. 
until you start to smell it. You sort of waft it in front of your nose. I do this with my kids all the time. So if I can't get them to put on an oil, they're having a meltdown or something like that. We're just, maybe I'm just like, or maybe I'm just putting it on <laughs> and letting it waft into the environment. A little more deliberate. And I've been talking to the clinicians about this because take a deep breath, take a deep breath is something that we say to kids all the time. And I say oils can make breathing fun again. This is gonna, this is gonna make breathe those deep breaths where some kids go, I don't want to do that. Um, or they become accustomed to, to not breathing deep. Let's introduce something else. Let's introduce a scent tent. The scent tent is when we drop an essential oil into the palm, one drop. We awaken it. We make a tent with our hands. We take some deep breaths. And then I kind of put the rest on like I would perfume. In my hair a little bit, around my wrists. There's also diffuser jewelry that you could wear. So I could drop anything with a lava bead. I see lava bead jewelry all over the place now or leather or suede. You can drop oils onto those things and then you can smell them. So even like a little keychain on a binder, you know, I know that kids, can, for kids, they're not going to be opening up a bottle of oil in school, like, I, right? So we think about what's the most practical use. Diffuser jewelry is awesome. My daughter has diffuser bracelets that she will, you know, get, you know, she will mix up and, and put some oil on there. You can also make roller bottles, which are diluted and sort of like a little perfume roller, but it's functional. This is a functional perfume. Um, and we can also make oil sprays for the environment. And then there are, there's diffusing. So diffusing is when we are gently and slowly emitting mostly water and a little bit of essential oil into the air. And so this is a catch-all way to help infuse the oils into your kitchen in the morning, a bedroom at night, slowly, steadily over the course of a couple hours. This is a standard diffuser. This is the one we use in the aromatherapy consultation. It's pretty, it has a lattice, a little lattice design there. And there's colors. The kids love the colors. And much like mine, you can see right here, I have it set to blue. You can set them to different colors. You can have the light off completely. What this is, is a base where you fill it with water up to the fill line. And then this is my favorite part. You get to customize what and how strong. I know that everybody has different preferences and also your room size may vary. So you could put one drop of essential oil and see how that goes. I do more like 10 to 15, and this is gonna run over the course of four to six hours, I think, for this one. So the best scenarios would be Again, I said, you know, in the morning, if you want everybody to kind of get into a good mood, or if you have a child who's not going to put on oils directly, or you want to introduce them more slowly, more ambiently, the diffuser helps you get that done. And then it's a big one for bedtime. It's even an incentive sometimes. Let's go, let's go set up your diffuser. Let's go pick your oils for your diffuser. I can't tell you how many kids love that process. And there are even diffusers that have sound machines built in and, and different ways that you can incorporate the oils for bedtime. I know bedtime's a big one. Bedtime's a big one. And so, oh, you know what? So is after school. We're going to talk about the different scenarios, but that's another big time. My kids come down, come home and they're ready to melt down, right? Because they've been holding it together at school all day. So I need it. <laughs> I need it for me as I'm making snack. I'm like, I'm just going to set up the diffuser and maybe it has some benefit for them as well. So thinking about these couple oils that I talked about, again, there are so many different options, but if we are going to, yes, I will share my link, Beatrice, yes. Um, so the aromatherapy for peaceful mornings might look like diffusing some oils in the kitchen, um, doing some breathing exercises. Maybe you have some, some routine, a morning routine you're already doing. I see aromatherapy as a wonderful complement to some of the practices you're already doing in your home, that you're doing with your family. Um, I, you know, thinking about Melissa's presentation, it's like, wow, there's so many different strategies and then ways to just 
you know, oh, let's take out our oils and let's roll it on our wrist or let's go set up the diffuser. Um, aromatherapy for daily stress transitions and new experiences. So as we're talking to a child, maybe we're preparing them for something new that's going to happen or a change in schedule. We can have aromatherapy alongside that conversation. And we can say, you know, I'm just, I'm, I, and you don't have to talk about it. Sometimes the less we say the better, right? But maybe you're just putting on your oils and you're saying, all right, well, so we're going to be going to speech therapy today. And let's just take some deep breaths before we do that. It's going to be a great time. You know, all those, all those things. And then oftentimes when kids are having a meltdown, I will do the swipe under the nose, or I will offer aromatherapy to them as a distraction. So would you like to come smell this with me? Would you like to take this roller? And that is a wonderful way to incorporate it as well. So you can see the scent tent, breathing activities, um, lots of different ways to use the oils. I wanted to share some testimonials here. <clears throat> some of these oils I didn't mention specifically, but these blends include all the oils I talked about, lavender, citrus oils, all those things. So my friend Laura had some wonderful things to share about how oils have helped her. When she said, I personally started to go through menopause two years ago, I had so much anxiety, I couldn't drive a car. I used either the stress away roll on or lavender on me and in a diffuser in the car. It helped so much. My daughter Lexi had a horrible time her first year of middle school last year. We used stress away or kid power every morning for her and lavender faithfully every night to calm her for bed. We never would have survived without it. Uh, Victoria shares that her 11 year old daughter was struggling with generalized anxiety. We use oils each night to help her have a rela relaxed transition for sleep diffuser. Additionally, we used a tranquil roller when she was feeling anxious during the day at school and a peace and calming roller on her wrists and behind her ears before she left for school. Giving her some control over her anxiety really seemed to help and we've made it through what seems like the worst part. So let's say the latter part of the day, we have the afternoon slump, maybe that's for you, maybe that's for the kids. Um, you know, you're carting around to different activities, you're sitting in traffic, you're having to convince kids to do homework. Again, I'm not going to discount the power of aromatherapy for caregivers, for clinicians, for teachers, for people who support children, and obviously for parents. So I love to use peppermint. I even have a diffuser going in my car that helps me with Fairfield County traffic because <laughs> I'm tracing all around. Um, and then certainly at bedtime, this was my reason for getting started with oils. I think oils really help us with a lovely transition to bedtime. I would start with lavender. Tangerine is also known to be a sedative. Um, it has really relaxing qualities in the brain. So you could rub these oils on your feet. My kids take baths. Sometimes we could add, we add oils to the Epsom salt and we put it into a bath. Same thing. You do bedtime yoga, you do breathing exercises. You have a routine with music or with stretching. Um, you can use lavender in a scent tent to help, you know, help with that experience. Or again, there's so many other blends that I can introduce you to and help you experience so you can figure out, ooh, that's, that's the one for me. The, bo the body knows when you find the ones that you like, it's, it's really awesome. So a couple other testimonials for work time. Um, Karen said, I often feel unable to focus or concentrate on anything. I walk around trying to figure out what I need to do. I found peppermint oil to be a game changer. Diffusing it allows me to focus, concentrate, and be more alert. And for bedtime, um, these are two of two women I know who are moms of young children. Um, I use cedarwood nightly on all in all of our diffusers at night for better sleep. We also have a bedtime roller for the kids that we roll on the shoulders and down the spine. This has helped tremendously with night terrors. And um, um, Liz uh, uses white angelica, which is another blend, and has also helped her daughter Taylor with her nightmares, which she's had since she's three months old. If we miss a night, then she has a nightmare. So, so many different families, so many different oils and ways to use them. But I wanted to give people a simple way to start. I wanted to be able to offer my time, my experience, my knowledge to answer questions, to problem solve, and help you figure out how to create these pockets of stress relief within your day. Whether you wake up, start, and the do list starts running, 
or your kids are giving you trouble about getting dressed for school or you know wherever those friction points are, you can build a toolkit and some new healthy habits around aromatherapy. This I see is such a great compliment, such a nice adjunct to so many other things that are happening in your world or in your family. And I love to walk people through the basics. So what we have as part of the Sasco menu of incredible multidisciplinary services <laughs> is this aromatherapy consultation. It's brand new and it's a two part consultation. So you have two sessions included in the consultation. The first one is to teach you the very basics and to talk to you about your routine and your goals and send you home with your own set of oils and a diffuser. The four that we, four that we talked about. So it's lavender, it's peppermint, it's a citrus blend, which is one of my favorites, and tangerine, and as well as the diffuser. And those allow you to start, to get a nice, manageable, simple introduction into aromatherapy. And then I provide you with personalized guidance, ongoing support. We meet again, how did it go? How can I help you further? Let's talk about what worked. Let's talk about what didn't. Um, but I am so eager to share this with more families. Again, I know from my parents, from my experience as a parent, from my experience as a teacher, how many people can benefit from this. And if this, if you're at all curious, or you think that this might help in your world, or maybe you have used sort of fragrance oils and you are looking for more of a, more of the benefits and more of those chemical compounds that we see in the research, um, I, I'm happy to share more about that as well. And I have some references here. This will all go out so you can look at the science. That first study is so cool. It talks about all about olfaction and then breaks down what does cypress do in the brain? What does lavender do in the brain? What is, um, yeah, so, so I love all that stuff. And I think that's what I have for today. That was great, Christina. Uh, Sally had to run, but she uh, chatted. Thank you for everything. Okay. Uh, yep. Awesome. Uh, we can we can leave it open for questions at this point. If anyone has a question, Beatrice may have unmuted her microphone, but I can't hear her. Yep. So I have questions. Oh, Hi. Um, Hi. Please. Hi. So I, you know started and then stopped so when this popped up as a webinar thank you reminded me to like pull my stuff out um yeah we are in need so i just curious because i was about to buy a diffuser for my daughter's room what is that one like can you post the link to it or did was it an I, yes. Amazon thing yes i can it's from it's called the desert mist diffuser and it's a really nice high quality one thing about diffusers is you want to make sure they're medical grade plastic. Like I, I touch some of them and they're like, <laughs> they fold in the middle. It's like, no, no, no. Cause you don't want the oils breaking down the plastic. Right. So this is the, this is the diffuser we use in the consultation, Beatrice. And I will send you a, I just sent you a message with the details. Okay. On that. Yep. All right. And um, what, cause I have, I'm looking at my collection, such a mishmash of oils. Is there a brand that you prefer that's considered? 